making sure you hit the spot that you want on the backboard and finishing it with a soft touch. Um, I find myself getting rushed a little too much as well. Uh, I feel like I know that I have a lot more time than I think I do. So I'm um, just kind of staying composed and, um, you know, finishing like I've done, you know, multiple times before, just kind of um, stand out of my own head and just uh, breathe and relax and put the ball in the hoop. Do you have some strong finishes that you can put back some um, drive yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, I'm attacking the rim. And I know that's kind of the, the next layer uh, to my game. You know, everyone knows that the primary thing I do is shoot. So um, when that gets taken away, putting the ball on the deck and finishing at the rim is um, where it's tricky to guard me. So um, continuing to work on that and continuing to grow my game is, is what I've been looking for in the last 10 games or so. College, college. Um, that was a mainstay in our in our offense in college. Um, you know, every day for five, 10 minutes, we work on just moving the ball, cutting off each other, and it built a really strong chemistry. So um, I know when to cut. I know what the right times are. And uh, just about building that chemistry, you know, with guys, you know, on the floor um, so I can read them and they can read me. Uh, it was later on junior, senior year, um, you know, our offense was so dynamic. We had such great guards who got downhill uh, that it made it really easy. And um, we had some of the highest efficient, efficient cutting guys in like NCAA history on uh, my senior year of college. So um, it was a big part of our offense. We scored a lot of points and it's really hard to guard because, you know, teams are so focused on the ball. Oh, yeah, plenty. It's just as far as like, you know, where I need to be on the floor, um, scouting reports, different guys in the league. Um, just playing defense in the NBA is just so much different than anything that I've done before. So I'm um, learning every day. I'm growing every day and, you know, I'm getting better and better. And, um, you know, I'm, you know, I, I think I'm a completely different defender now than I was even a month ago. Yeah, I mean, some of it, like almost, you can almost be too open sometimes, you know, like if you catch the ball and there's nobody around you, um, kind of messes with your head a little bit. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to thinking about making open threes, less is more. You just got to let it fly and, you know, trust the reps that you've been putting in. And, you know, you got to know that they're no different than the shot you made on that court right out there versus in any arena across the country. Oh, it's good, man. Zags are going all the way. Got them in my bracket. Yeah. Uh, I haven't talked to Rue, but I'd be kind of disappointed if he didn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, I hope so too, man. Uh, I got a good squad over there and I got a really good chance. And what are your impressions of Oh, I like him, man. He's a really good player, um, really good feel for the game, and he has a skill set that not a lot of people, you know, have ever seen before. Um, and I'm excited to see you know, what he does the next level and how quickly he develops because it seems like he's a really quick, quick learner. So um, I think it'll be, you know, I mean, obviously the sky's the limit for him. Any role in terms of posting him or, or any sort of uh, Nah, no, he, I mean, uh, I was kind of out of the hosting business when I wasn't going to play with the guy that was on the visit. <laughs> so Chet, I mean, Chet was there the year that I was gone. So uh, I'll let the other guys take care of that. So credit goes to them. Oh, it's been critical um, being able to play through mistakes and just learn by experience. I mean, there's no substitute for NBA minutes, no matter how many you get. So I'm um, just really happy that I have the chance to play through mistakes and um, play through all those things. And it's, it's made me a better player and I'm, consequently I make less of them. So, um, you know, really happy that I've gotten that opportunity and um, I've took it in stride. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all the right things. I'm making big strides. I feel great about where my game is at. I just want to win every game from here on out. Like that's really it for me personally. Um, you know, losing sucks and losing games in a row sucks. And um, I want to turn that ship around as quickly as possible and do whatever I need to do to help us go 14 and 0, you know, for the rest of the season. 
All right, Corey, let's go to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Christos. Hey, Corey, how are you? Great. Uh, my question to you is, in those in that five-game stretch, what did you learn about uh, your team? What, what did you see about the level of aggressiveness or the level that you approached the game overall as a team? In the last five games? Yes. Um, I mean, we got to... We just got to play harder for 48, you know, all 48. And that's that's me. That's all of our starters. That's the guys that come off the bench. That's our coaches. Everyone's got to do their job a little bit better for all 48. I mean, we have stretches where we're really, really good. Um, we're really hard to guard. We're tough on defense. Um, but it's those lulls that, you know, stretch from five to ten minutes or even a quarter that get us in trouble. And um, those kind of gaps are – uh obvious and they've made themselves known over the last five you know you know it's hard to win in this league and um when you can't put together solid 48 minute stretches all of us uh it's been and for you personally what are your priorities until the end of the season how how important what you need to do what do you you have to do to finish strong the season from personal standpoint I just, I mean, I'm just honestly going to keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, I feel like I'm on the right track. I'm putting together really good weeks and really good months, and I'm getting better each day. So um, I know that sounds like a kind of a corny answer, or maybe not the answer that you want, but it's the honest truth. Um, just keep doing what I'm doing and keep growing and um, keep checking, you know, things off of my bucket list, my to-do list, and it's all going to work itself out. It was a good answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go to Neil. Hey, Corey, a lot of guys have talked about just, you know, staying on a string defensively, communication, things like that. You know, Wes is saying, you know, some guys might be on one page, some guys might be on another page. You guys have talked all the time about, you know, people are self-accountable, things like that. How do you think that has progressed, you know, to this point of the season? Are you guys still able to keep each other, keep each other accountable? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think our communication needs to get better. I mean, you guys can't, if you're watching on TV, you can't hear us talk, but um, we need to be louder. We need to be more communicative, communicative and talk earlier. Um, and that'll just lend itself to being on a string. You know, really good teams uh, don't, don't play like they're in a library, you know, like the, the gym's not a library. So we got to be able to talk. And um, that goes for me. I haven't been great at that. I need to be better. And, um, you know, everybody across the board needs to be better too. Uh, whether that's, you know, players to players, players to coaches, coaches to players, like it's got to be just another level for us uh, the next 14 games, and we're going to see ourselves as a much defensive, much better defensive team. How would you compare the level of communication between college and the pros? Is it similar? Is it a lot different? Is it different in varying ways? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's different in varying ways, just because people call things different. People call stuff different. Things. I mean, that's that's a really bad way of putting it. Like different calls mean different things. So in college, you kind of hear the same stuff. And then the NBA, the language kind of changes. But as far as like how much you talk or um, the level of communication, that doesn't change at all. It should be at a high level, no matter if you're playing in high school, elementary school, or in the NBA. Thanks, Corey. We'll go to Takashi. Oh, hello, Corey. Can you hear me? Oh. Very nice to see. My name is Takeshi Shibata from Tokyo, Japan, and I'm doing a, a little bit of a, a NBA Japan games propaganda here. So I'd like to ask you about uh, uh, what particularly do you want to, you know, uh, try to do in Japan? For example, uh, for example, uh, uh, Bradley Beal, last time he was here in 2016, and he. He tried uh, uh, some Japanese kimono and uh, Japanese sword like that. And uh, uh, I think he went to small wrestling. So how about you? <laughs> yeah, uh, the kimono sounds sweet. I'll try mm -hmm. that. Um, I wouldn't trust myself with the samurai sword. So I might <laughs> stay away from that. Um, and then I am willing to try any, I'm willing to try any food that's put in front of me. Like I won't, I might not like it, um, but I'm willing to try it. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to um, definitely taking in some Japanese food and um, seeing how that is. And, you know, I've, I've heard that it's a lot, I mean, I know that it's a lot different than here in the United States. So mm -hmm. really looking forward to, you know, that part of Japan as well. 
I actually starting to learn Japanese uh, culture or, or something like a, a, you know about a yeah, country. Well, yeah, that, that's yeah. That next year is going to be a great chance for me to do that. You know, I only know my share of Japanese culture through Rui. Um, I've never experienced it, you know, personally myself. So uh, I'm really looking forward to being over there and um, learning more about it. Okay, thank you so much. Arigatouzaimashita. And then Corey, last question from inside the room. We'll take it from Chase. I mean, some people do. I don't. Um, you know, everything that I do in the weight room is trying to directly translate to the court. So, you know, when I'm trying to go up for a dunk on a curl screen in Golden State, I'm not thinking, okay, I got to jump 40 feet, 40 inches off the ground here. Um, I'm just trying to get up as high as I can as quickly as possible. And, you know, whether that's increasing my vertical leap or um, just being quicker off the ground or even quicker on a second jump. Um, those are the things that I always kind of take into account. But as far as just the numbers go, like, I don't think I've tested my vertical leap since the combine. Like, it's just not something that I just line up and do every every day. Uh, yeah. the, the biggest thing, or the first thing, rather, um, we looked a little fatigued. Um, you know, obviously, that's no excuse. Uh, I get it. It was a long trip, and sometimes that first game back after a long trip, feels like another road game, but you know, that, that's a situation that we've been in before. Uh, every team has to kind of go through and it, it's really no excuse for, you know, the lapses defensively. Uh, I think it, whether you could say, hey, we were heavy legged and missed shots, uh, that, that's, that's a piece of it. Um, but we generated a lot of great looks, especially early. Um, we struggled to make them. And, you know, once again, I thought that kind of deflated our defensive energy. Even even through all the dealings, the effects of the the compression of games, you know, doesn't really allow it right now. Um, so we have to just continue to find, you know, smaller windows to do it. Uh, we did a lot of it today. Um, and it just has to be something that we continue to harp on. It's not going to correct itself overnight. And it's just one of those things where pushing guys to get, you know, out of their comforts, communicating on the floor or being demonstrative verbally. Um, so this has to be an area of growth that we all kind of mature in. Indicated recently that maybe Chris Evans was able to play in back-to-back. Are you more hurt? Is there any more clarity on that? As of right now, today, he will play in back-to-backs. And I think it's just one of those things we continue to monitor him, make sure there's no you know, residual effect or any issue. But um, he looks good. He was uh, fine today in all the competitive stuff. So um, as of right now, he, we look forward to him you know, having him on back-to-backs. Tommy said it himself, you know, after Brad's and player development, his priority in spite of the, the recent lead, what positive have you seen from three young players? Well, you know, it's, and I said this before, with, you know, in particular with Denny, uh, he struggled on the West Coast trip. You know, the first three games, he, to his own admission, you know, had a hard, hard stretch. Um, but to see him bounce back the way he did in the final game um, is a sign of maturity. You know, and that, that's an area where he's got to continue to grow. Uh, when you don't have success and you struggle a bit, you got to work your way through it. You know, it's not going to be one of those things things that anyone's going to gift you. You have to aid in your own recovery. Um, you know, we can help, them, but uh, this game, so that's a positive. Um, I think, uh, you know, where Rui is compared to where he was you know, a month and a half ago. He's in a different place. He's a better player, uh, more in sync to what we're trying to do. Still has area some room for growth there's been a lot of improvement you know you, you struggled of course we all struggled but it's another opportunity for him to grow and learn um, and sometimes you gotta take your lumps throughout that process but you know down the line you'll be better for it 
sign of progress and development for really what the you know, take a seat in high attention for you know what it may look like. Well, I think that's that's the message that you know that we've all talked about. That those are the right types of threes, the threes that are in rhythm. Um, you know, paint threes that by all means keep shooting, don't hesitate. Um, I think we got a little a little gun shy a little bit in the second half because we didn't have success early. So we start turning a few of those down and playing back into crowds, um, which which hurt us offensively. But you know, uh, if you talk about the numbers, you know, we were four for fourteen on paint threes. Those are the threes we wanted to generate. And we just didn't knock them down. So obviously it's a make or miss league, but we certainly can't allow that to affect, you know, the other end of the floor. Well, that's part of the accountability. I mean, you talk about their growth. That, that's part of it. You know, it's, it's easy to say, we'll just go play and we'll, just, we're going to live with all your mistakes. No, that sends the wrong message. And that's for everybody. I mean, I think it's, you know, across the board. Of course, certain guys have a little bit more latitude than others, but you, know, you still have to be accountable to your teammates and accountable to what we're trying to do uh, as, a, as a unit. Uh, if you're not, then those minutes are not guaranteed. Uh, you know, just the way we're constructed, those young players are a big part of our rotation. So they're going to get... Uh, minutes by design, um, but they have to make sure they continue to earn those. Well, and I think initially um, working him back into, you know, the fold, and then there were some minute restrictions for quite some time. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're kind of getting out of the, that, that realm, um, you know, where we can push him a little bit, extend him a little bit more. Um, but I think still, it's still going to take some time. You know, I don't, I don't want to commit to saying, hey, you know, he's a starter, this or that. It's not necessarily who starts, but who finishes. And I think that that's important. Uh, where we are right now, um, it's it's by committee. You know, whoever's playing well, whoever's giving us what we need in that moment, you know, we'll get those minutes. What's the area of growth? Well, I think uh, overall feel for, you know, the defensive side. You know, the one-on-one -on -one part, I think he gets some of the coverage things. He's still, there's a little confusion or hesitation. And then uh, that layer of communication behind it, you know, and a lot of times we don't talk because we're not quite certain what to say. Um, and even when in those moments, even if it's not schematically correct, at least if we're communicating, then all five guys can be connected uh, and we'll figure it out afterwards. But uh, I think sometimes there's some hesitation um, and now we're, we're behind the ball a little bit, you know, now we're playing, trying to play catch up, trying to react to situations. And that's where you find yourself scrambling. It's very tough to scramble in this league, close out, scramble and get to the three-point line. Uh, if we're finding ourselves in those situations a lot, um, you know, you, you don't ever – it makes it very difficult to catch up. He's had a, a heck of a year. I mean, his size and, and strength, his ability to play downhill, um, play in transition, um, you know, it's, it's tough to – because he's big enough to go where he wants to go. Uh, I think he's ball better, which makes it tough for in pick and rolls to say, hey, go under. Um, you know, it's, he, he's going to make you pay. So it's a challenge. And obviously, you know, Ish, Haul, um, we give up a lot of size. So it's a little bit of concern. But, you know, those guys will fight, compete. Um, we just have to meet force with force and try to, you know, meet them early. Well, you know, it's, it's tough because, you know, sometimes he's matched against larger guys and it, some of that is just um, technique, understanding how to, you know, gain leverage, play the game within the game, be a step ahead of the play. Um, a lot of young players struggle with that, but I'll give Corey, you know, a lot of credit. He tries to put himself in the right coverage spot. Um, he tries to, you know, adhere to the game plan um, to at least give himself a chance. But uh, the, the growth part for him is just kind of sniffing situations out. I'm just kind of reading the flow and reading, uh, trying to anticipate, you know, what's next. I think if you can do that, you'll give yourself, a, you know, a half a second, a second or two uh, to, to be ahead of the play. All right, Coach, we'll switch to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Christos. Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Uh, for you, what are the 
the main challenge or what are the what are the challenges that you have ahead of you until the end of the season until the end of the regular season as a team well i just think it's uh, just trying to stay the course without getting you know frustrated and get deflated and it's less uh you know for me and it's more the group you know at times when you're, you're putting effort into something and it's not going your way um it's easy to you know just you know trying to pull back a little bit and instead of pushing you know digging deeper try to find another way to impact it um you know, I want to keep their spirits up, but also you got to coach and hold these guys accountable. Um, I think that there are a lot of lessons to be learned in the last 14 games, and these are valuable games. You know, of course, we want to win all of them, but, uh, you know, win or lose, you, we can take something from it. And we, we don't want to, you know, build bad habits, continue to kind of enforce and lay our foundation uh, and hold guys accountable to that. And speaking about the accountability, how – how important is for your players to keep each other account- accountable? And what did you see in the locker room speaking about that? I'm sorry, say the last piece again, please. How how important for your players is to see them keep each other accountable in the locker room? And did you see anything about that in the team during the practices or in the locker room uh, uh, as well? well? It's very important. You know, I've said it since day one. It's it's one thing to come from me, come from the staff. Um, you know, that's, that's part of our job, but the really good teams, you know, they hold each other accountable from within. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, always your best player. It, it's easy, of course, when it is, but, you know, anyone from a rookie to, you know, your, one of your starters, um, you know, they should know exactly what, what's needed in that moment and should be able to uh, communicate that to a teammate, you know, and I think it's not necessarily what you say, but how you say it. I think if you come from a place of respect, you guys have to, Honor that um, and know that this is what's most important. You know, get beyond yourself, get beyond your feelings. Uh, it's being said to, you know, help improve the group. Thank you very much, Coach. And we'll finish it up with Takashi. Uh, hello, Coach. Again, my name is Takeshi Shibata from Tokyo, Japan. So I would like to continue to uh, do some NBA Japan games propaganda here. So. I would like to ask you about your own experience in Japan. I think you you told me that uh, you you have been here one, once in the past. So can you can you share some of the your, the, your experience in here in Japan the last time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I worked a uh, basketball without borders event I think three years ago now um, in Tokyo. Um, and it, it was a it was a lot of fun. We were there probably maybe a week to ten days, um, you know. And you you never really get a chance to fully immerse yourself um, in the experience, you know, with the camps and you know you're moving back and forth, and running clinics. Uh, you're in the gym quite a bit, but just the opportunity to be there, you know, experience some of the um, <clears throat> excuse me uh, some of the food, some of the culture. Uh, we were able to get off site a little bit and uh, do some tours, some tours. Uh, really impressive, you know, and I, I couldn't speak uh, enough about how in, in, ingratiating the, you know, the, the folks were there, you know, they, um, you know, with open arms, they're very open, um, uh, very, very pleasant, very, you know, they're very accommodating, um, and just the history behind uh, the country is very intriguing, you know, so I, I look forward to experience that again, um, and I already went to Rui a couple days ago, and I asked him, I said, you got to give me like four or five things I need to see and or experience, and you got to give me two or three restaurants that, that are uh, are must must go tos. So I look forward to that. Mm-hmm. Didn't you go to the Olympic Stadium that your father played once in 1967? Now that um, we that was uh, in 67. I'm trying to think yeah. if that was the same place. I, I believe so, but I'm not sure. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to tell you something's wrong, but I will say this: uh, myself, Pat Delaney, uh, a couple of, of other NBA assistants, we did do the uh, uh, Mario Kart uh, experience there in, in Tokyo, which was a lot of fun, a little dangerous, but uh, it, it was one to. Uh, we got a lot of great pictures. <laughs>